This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now we've discussed some basics of creating lights, placing them, adjusting their various settings, and creating shadows. I want to talk about some lighting theory. Now there's different ways to light a scene or a character. Things have been developed over the years through stage lighting, through motion picture lighting, video lighting, photography, and so on. And one approach is called three-point lighting. Three-point lighting is popular in 3D. It's also popular in video because it's a quick way to light a person and have that person look aesthetic. In other words, you can create an aesthetic lighting setup very quickly with three lights. Now, it's not the only system out there. And in fact, many cinematographers will not necessarily use three-point lighting, but it's really good to be aware of three-point lighting because at least you can get a lighting setup that looks good with a minimal amount of effort. And then you can move on to other lighting styles once you get more practice. So three-point lighting infers there are three lights. You have your main light, which is your key light. You have a second light, which is weaker, which is a fill light. And you have some type of back, rim, or hair light that comes from behind. So I'm going to show you how to set up that kind of lighting with this mannequin scene. So the mannequin is open once again, but there's no lights in the scene and there's no ground plane. So let's say I'm going to dolly in and I want to light this mannequin so he looks attractive from this perspective view. So I'm going to place some lights. I'm going to go to the top view to start. I'll create three lights and then we'll go on to the other views. So the first light I want to create is a key light. That's going to be the strongest light. Now, which light type should I use? Well, a spotlight or a directional light are both good choices for a key light. So let's try a spotlight. I'm going to go to Create, Lights, Spotlight. Comes in at 0, 0, 0. I'm going to move that aside. And just from the top view, I'm going to rotate with my hotkeys and place it. And the first trick for three-point lighting is to take your key light, your strongest light, which is a spotlight, and place it roughly 45 degrees off your axis between your camera and the character. So in other words, if you imagine the camera is directly in front of the character, can draw a line from the camera, which is roughly here, straight to the character. If you imagine that the light forms roughly a 45 degree angle, so if there's a line going between the light and the character, and a line going between the character and the camera, the angle between them is roughly 45 degrees. So over here on the side, so it's either on the left side or the right side. And I'm just going to rotate the light to point it at the mannequin. I'm not going to worry about the height off the ground right now. So that's going to be the key light. I want to make the strongest light, so I'll go to the Attribute Editor and take a look at the Intensity settings. So I'm going to try something that's a little bit higher than default. I'm going to try 1.5 in terms of intensity. So that's the first light. That's the key light, which is a spotlight. The second light I want to create is a fill light. And the fill light is the second strongest light in the scene, but it's less strong than the key. It's called a fill light because it fills in the dark areas. In fact, let's go ahead and render out this scene with one light. Now, I am going to have to move the spotlight up in the air. Right now it's down on the ground, but very quickly I'll move it up. And to make sure it's hitting the mannequin, I'm going to go to Lighting, Use All Lights. I can see it's definitely hitting his upper body, so I can render this. And there's the key. Now, because the key's coming from one side, part of the mannequin is black, not only because of the cone size right now, which is too small, but on the back side of his head or on the side of the head that's not facing the light is dark. So the fill light is designed to fill in that dark area to give it a little bit more definition. So I'll hide this, go back to my top view, and work on the position of my key light a little bit more. I'm going to put it a little bit further away from the center line. Again, roughly 45 degrees off of the axis. I'm going to create my fill light. So you can use any light for fill light do you want. There's a couple of choices. You can use a directional light, you can use another spotlight, or you actually use an ambient light. Now remember, ambient light is a good soft light, but it gets everywhere in the scene. It's a little bit hard to control. So I think in that case, I'm going to pick a directional light. So I'm going to go to Create, Lights, Directional Light. Now directional light creates parallel rays of light, whereas a cone has divergent rays of light that are limited by the cone size, it doesn't really matter which one you decide to use for the key or the fill. 
It's wherever you're used to working with, wherever you're comfortable with in this situation. So I'm going to rotate this directional light. And the trick with the fill is to place on the opposite side of the key. So the key light's on the right side, you place the fill on the opposite side roughly at the same angle. I'll go back to the perspective view. You can already see that the directional light's filling in what used to be the dark side. Now, right now, the directional light is too intense. Normally, a fill light is less intense than the key, and a good rule of thumb is to make the directional light, or the fill light in this case, about half the intensity of the key light. So if the key light is 1.5 right now, actually, I'll make the directional light 0.75. That's a good starting point. So I'm going to re-render the perspective view. And you see that directional light is now filling in what used to be dark on that side. Now, the reason that those two lights are placed roughly 45 degrees off the axis between the character and the camera is because when you do that with a human or a character like this that's roughly human, it tends to make for aesthetic lighting. In fact, that's a trick with old Renaissance painters is if you have the light sources coming in from roughly those directions, you get an aesthetic patch of bright on the face and an aesthetic patch of dark. And where the shadows wind up in terms of nose and eyes tends to be very attractive. So it's just been something that's been worked out over the years. So if you place lights in roughly these positions for your 3D character or even your real person on your film shoot or in your photography studio, you'll get some pretty nice lighting right off the bat. Now you notice that my directional light's left low on the ground. Remember, directional lights have direction, but the position does not matter. Now you can raise the directional light up in the air just for your own reference if you want to. It's up to you. Now you don't have to have the lights come in exactly the same height as the character's head. For example, my key light's the same height as the mannequin's head, and I'll make that larger so you can see that. You can make it a little bit higher, a little bit lower. In fact, to make it a little higher or lower, it tends to be a little bit more aesthetic. And higher is probably the best choice. Low will create some potentially unattractive shadows, so high pointing down a little bit is a good option. Now, if your key is coming in a little high and pointing lower, one thing you can do with the fill is have it lower pointing higher. So the fill is kind of coming in at the opposite direction of your key. So key a little high, fill a little bit low. Now, if I look at the top view, they're still making that 45 degree angle, as I had mentioned. And in fact, if you compare them to each other, you can imagine that they form a 90 degree angle between those two lights. So let's re-render this. So I made the key a little higher, the fill a little bit lower. And one thing you'll notice when you have your lights roughly positioned like this, is you'll get a nice core. And the core is that slightly darker bridge between the darker side and the brighter side. So this is the fill side from the directional light. This is the key side. Key is brighter, there's a bit of a darker core, and then it goes to the filled side. Now the ratio between the fill and the key is flexible. In other words, you don't have to have the fill exactly half the key as a starting point. For instance, I can go to the directional light and reduce its intensity even lower, like 0.4, re-render it, and get a darker shadow side. So the directional is still adding some light here so it doesn't go pure black, but now it's a little bit moodier because that fill side is darker. So that's up to you what your ratio is between the intensity of the key and the intensity of the fill light. Now, since we're looking at this render, let's go ahead and increase the cone size of my key. I don't really want to cut off here at the bottom. So I'll pick my spotlight in this case, go to cone angle and increase that. And we'll try another render. So I increase the cone size so it's large enough to go past the edge of the frame that I'm rendering. So now I have a nice key side, nice fill side. So you can also continue to play around with the intensity of the key light. So if I go back to the spotlight, I can make the spotlight a little bit more intense to see how that looks. So intensity of two for the spotlight. Give that a try. So that's good, it's a little bit brighter on that side. So he's well illuminated, but he's not so bright that his detail gets washed out and turns pure white. You wanna avoid that. All right, so now we have two lights. We have our key and our fill. And now in order to get three point lighting, we need a third light. And that would be a backlight or what's sometimes called a hair light or a rim light. So a great light for a backlight or rim light is a directional light. So I'm gonna make a third light, which is directional light. And what I wanna do with that is move it behind the character. So it's behind the character on the opposite side of the camera. 
The trick with the backlight rim light hair light is to make it graze the edge of the character so you get a little tiny rim on the dark side. And this is designed to make sure the dark side of the character does not disappear into a dark background. So this one little tiny thin rim right here on the dark side of the character. Now in order to place them, I'm going to go back to my perspective view. And I'm going to rotate my rim light until I see that tiny rim appearing on the dark side. I'll make this window bigger. So I'll rotate it away so it goes away. Now as I rotate it inward, you see that little rim creeps along the edge. That's where I want it. Now, you generally can make the rim light a little bit more intense than all the other lights because it's really just grazing the edge. So I'm going to turn that up to 5. And when I turn it up to 5 in terms of intensity, you can see I get a nice hard rim there. Now I continue to rotate just to get it barely showing up on the dark side. And I'll try that as a render. And there's the rim. A rim is very stylistic. It doesn't necessarily equate to anything in the real world, but it can be very aesthetic. Again, it helps prevent the character from disappearing into the background on the dark side. Now, you don't necessarily have to have it that intense. I can reduce intensity. Let's try two instead. And obviously, it'll start to fade away. So the hard part of the rim is just getting it in the correct position to just graze the edge of the dark side, but not come across the face of the character too much. If I rotate it too much, I might let it leak across the dark side so much that it interferes with the other lights. So this is not very nice. I really want to just barely touch the edge. Now you can stop with the three-point lighting. In other words, you can have a key in the fill and stop there. You don't have to have rim lights. It's purely optional, but often it looks really nice. For example, it's often used in feature animation because it creates a nice aesthetic look, which is nevertheless a little bit stylized. All right, so that's your three lights for three-point lighting. If you look at the top, you have the key on one side. Fill on the opposite side, less intense. You have the rim back or hair light coming from behind, just grazing the character. So the rim's on the dark side. So if you follow those basic steps for three-point lighting, you'll have pretty nice lighting on any kind of character. Now I'm going to save this file out so you can take a look. It's going to be called Man 3-Point, and I'll be in a Chapter 7 folder.